Here we're gonna look at how continuous functions defined on the real line interact with some of the notions of the topology of the real line. Before we get to it, I wanna look at a couple of definitions though. So let's recall that f from a to r is continuous at a point a in a if for every epsilon bigger than zero, there is a delta bigger than zero such that if x is in a, and the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon. So I wanna point out here that this is very much a pointwise definition. So notice up here we have a point which is given and then for every epsilon there is a delta. This delta is going to depend on epsilon and possibly this point a as well. Next, I want to recall the definition of an open set. So a subset U of the real numbers is said to be open if for every A in U there is an epsilon bigger than zero such that the epsilon neighborhood centered at A is completely contained in U. And also I want to recall that the epsilon neighborhood centered at A is really just the open interval A minus epsilon to A plus epsilon. Great. And so this classic theorem that we're going to prove is the equivalence of the topological notion of continuity and the real analytic notion of continuity. And that says that if f is a function from r to r and it's everywhere continuous, that is equivalent to the inverse image of an open set being open. In other words, f inverse of u is open when u is open. Or we could show that if u is open, then f inverse of u is open. So that's equivalent. Okay, so now let's get going with the proof in the forward direction first. So that means we want to suppose that f from r to r is continuous. And I'll just say continuous and I mean everywhere continuous. And we also want to suppose that we have an open set in the codomain. Well, here the, the codomain and the domain are the same, so um, it's not really that illuminating, but here we have U is an open set of R. And let's point out what we want to show, what would finish this proof, or the forward direction of this proof, I should say. We want to show that F inverse U is open. And that's gonna be an open subset of the real numbers. Great, and so what tools do we have in order to prove that? We have the tools of the openness of U and the continuity of F. Okay, so let's get to showing that F inverse of U is open. So let's suppose that A is an element of F inverse of U the inverse image of u. Now let's recall what that is real quick. So that's gonna be all x in R such that f of x is an element from u. That's the definition of the pre-image of any set. Great, but now notice that that tells us that f evaluated at a is in u, which we know to be an open set. Great, and so what that means is that we can find some epsilon bigger than zero, such that the epsilon neighborhood centered at f of a is completely contained in u. So in other words, v sub epsilon f a is a subset of u. But notice that is going to be the same thing as saying that this open interval, f of a minus epsilon, f of a plus epsilon is totally contained in u. Okay, so we just used the openness of u. Next thing that we wanna do is use the continuity of f. So we will find a delta corresponding to this epsilon. So notice that this epsilon came into existence by the openness of u. Now this delta is going to come into existence to correspond to that epsilon. So let's find a delta bigger than zero such that if the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon. So now we've readied all of the parts in order to finish this off. And I'm gonna claim that this delta is the special delta that will prove the openness of f inverse of u. Okay, so let's get to it. So uh, let's maybe make this claim 
that V sub delta centered at A is totally contained in F inverse of U. So here's the proof of the claim. So let's maybe suppose that X is in V delta of A. But now notice that that means that X is in this open interval A minus delta to A plus delta. But now put into an inequality, that's the same thing as saying that the absolute value of X minus A is less than delta. But now, if the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, that tells us that the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon, because this delta corresponded to that epsilon. But now notice that we can rewrite this inequality as an interval um, statement. So this says that f of x is in the open interval f of a minus epsilon, f of a plus epsilon, which is equal to this epsilon neighborhood and thus is completely contained in u. So now let's see what we've got here. We've got x is in v delta a, and then we ended with f of x is in u. But the fact that f of x is in u means that x is in f inverse u. But now, if we started with x being in v delta a and ended with x being in f inverse of u, then we have proven this claim, which this claim finished the proof of this thing being an open set. In other words, f inverse u is an open set. And we're finished with this forward direction. And now we're ready for this reverse direction. So we wanna suppose this statement which is on the right. So in other words, we wanna suppose that F inverse U is open when U is open. And we wanna end with F is everywhere continuous. So let's say that we uh, have A in R and we are given epsilon bigger than zero, and our goal is to construct an appropriate delta. So where we can leverage this if and then statement up here. So this kind of statement is true for any open set U, but we wanna use it on a special open set U. So let's maybe notice that if we set U equal to the epsilon neighborhood centered at F of A, which again, that's just the open interval F of A minus epsilon, F of A plus epsilon, this is open. Great. But then by our hypothesis, that tells us that F inverse U is open. We also notice the following fairly simple fact and that is that f of a is an element of u by the definition of u, but that tells us that a is in the inverse image of u, in other words, f inverse u, which is an open set. Great, so now let's find a delta corresponding to the openness of f inverse of u, which we get from the hypothesis, and the point A, which is in F inverse of U. So in other words, such that the, Eps, the delta neighborhood centered at A is totally contained in F inverse of U. In other words, that pre-image of U. Now the next thing that we wanna do is show that this delta corresponds to the given epsilon and the continuity at A. So let's maybe go ahead and suppose that the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta. But now rewriting that in terms of open sets, that means that x is in the interval a minus delta comma a plus delta, which is a subset of f inverse u, in other words, the pre-image of u. But next we can evaluate this at f of x and notice that that means that f of x is in u but u is equal to this epsilon neighborhood centered at f of a. In other words, it is f a minus epsilon, f of a plus epsilon. As an inequality relationship, we see that the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon, which is exactly where we needed to end to prove this reverse direction. And that's a good place to stop.